Have you ever thought to yourself, is this a healthy behavior? Or maybe you're not even at the point where you're like asking yourself, like, am I exhibiting unhealthy or healthy behaviors? Maybe everything just seems normal to you. Um, but today I'm going to talk about one of the behaviors that I used to do all of the time in my ED, and I have physical proof of it, and we're gonna dive into that, um, that I thought was normal. Like, especially you'll hear how I'm talking about it. Like, Chloe totally thought this is a normal, just regular thing to do. Um, but I look at that now and I go, huh. <laughs> yeah, probably not that normal. <laughs> um, probably definitely very disordered um, and definitely a representation of energy debt and my brain being malnourished. So let's just watch the video which shows me doing this behavior and then we're going to chat about it. And if you are someone who does the same thing, oh my gosh, I want you to hit the like button um, and go ahead and hit subscribe while you're at it because you obviously are going to need my content then if you are doing things like this. Okay, so let's just give this a little play here. This is what happens in my family when you get an Amazon order of all of your favorite snacks, like sea snacks. You end up finding a random jar or box to put it in that no one will ever know that that is sea snacks. So this is the behavior of hoarding and we don't talk about it a lot, but it's behavior that I see a lot of my clients exhibit and it's a behavior that I obviously went through. So pretty much I'm saying like, hey, when you're a part of a big family, <laughs> I'm using that as my excuse, right? Like you have to hide your food. I'm like, why? No one else in the family is hiding their food. We all just have food in the pantry and in the fridge and we all just eat it, right? No one has their one special type of food that they have to eat and they have to make sure that they have enough of. Um, I was the only one that had that. Um, so here I am, I bought all these sea snacks and I also, it shows here in a second, I bought these little like go raw, like ginger snap cookies. Um, I remember I used to be obsessed with these. They're like completely raw, just like dehydrated dates with some ginger powder and like sesame seeds. I'm not gonna lie, they actually do taste kind of good, but also I haven't had them since my ED. So you never know if the food that you ate in your ED that you were like, this is amazing, this is so good. You never know if it's actually good until you like try it again as a recovered person because the amount of things that I was like, this is delicious. Like these black seed crackers are so yummy um and then I ate them now and I'm like why would I why would I eat this um so I remember them being really good I ordered a huge thing of it and I felt the need to hide it from everyone because like I had to have all of it like I wanted it right and then so I put here this is what I think is like so funny <laughs> I go you are brilliant Chloe and I'm like pointing up to like the box that I hid it in oh I'm like, am I brilliant or is my brain in malnutrition? And I feel like there is a lack of resources. So the second that I get a resource, I'm going to hide it for me because that is like to my brain, that is my survival. I need this. Um, the reason why my body is perceiving that there's a lack of resources, guys, is not because my bank account was low. It's not because I was living out on the streets. That's not why, why my brain perceived that resources were low was because I was losing a ton of weight and I was in severe energy debt. I, I simply was just not eating enough to sustain my body. And so like, let's think about this from like a thousand years ago. Why on earth would a human a thousand years ago before diet culture, before this pressure to be super thin and to look a certain way, like why would someone just all of a sudden not eat? It was probably because they were in a famine. It was probably because there actually legitimately was no food around. And so if I, in the modern day, start restricting my food, my brain is just perceiving that I'm in a similar situation. I'm in the middle of the desert. I'm in a famine. There's no food around. So when we get resources, let's hide it. And I only did this with safe foods. I felt like I needed to have enough of my safe foods around. I don't know, there was something comforting about it. Again, it's like, I, it's hard to explain what's going on in your brain because it just seems kind of silly when you're out of it. But at that time, I think it was just such a big thing for me that like I had my food that I could eat, this food that I deemed safe and I needed to make sure that I had enough of it. Just funny because that was a period in my life where I was hardly eating. So it would take me probably literally a year to get through this box of seaweed snacks. Um, 
let's continue on and see if there's anything else in this Instagram memory that popped up. Before I pack these away, I just wanted to take a minute to tell you guys how amazing these Go Raw Ginger Snap cookies are. This is not like affiliate advertising at all. This is just literally something that I absolutely love. Look at those ingredients, so good. Let's talk about this use of good. When I said like, this is so good, what I really actually am saying here is not like, this tastes so good. Um, this is a good food. I, I'm saying like, this is morally good to eat because the ingredients are super clean, very simple. And so this is good. Like you're allowed to eat this. This is morally a good thing to eat. Um, that's really at that moment, that's what I meant by good. Again, it wasn't like, these are really tasty. These are really good. It's like, these are not going to make me feel guilty for eating because I have such a high standard of what good is when it comes to like food um, that this like this matches. And that's what I meant by good. All right. This uh, Instagram memory kind of continues on and I start talking about um, water and drinking a lot of it. And I figured this is a good time to just swoop this into this conversation. I have started drinking so much water lately because it's super important to stay very hydrated. I was realizing that I really just was not drinking enough water. So I'm making it a priority to drink more water throughout the day. So what I've been doing is I've been literally filling up this whole pitcher and I have my straw and this is what I try and get through in the morning. I try and get through this whole thing before workout and after workout. I'm going to be drinking this much water. I also had this. All right. So I feel like you talk to any health person or like, you know, health guru or listen to any health advice and they always tell you drink water. And I really fell into this trap of I need to flood my body with water. I need to wake up. I need to have this huge vase of water. I need to go work out on an empty stomach. I need to come back. I need to do this whole vase of water again. And you might think like, wow, that's extreme. But let's think about all the YouTubers that we see doing exactly this or all the Instagram people we see doing exactly this. It's really promoted. Sure, they squeeze lemon in it and I didn't, but it's the same thing. We're just like downing water. Um, I was definitely, I feel like utilizing water at that time to really um, not feel my hunger kind of flood my system with water so that like I felt like something was in my system but in reality nothing was and that's a pretty dangerous thing uh, first and foremost uh, when we drink too much water we really risk messing up the electrolyte balance in our body um, and that can cause a lot of issues and a lot of issues with like, glucose and everything in our system and so you can actually really actually like poison yourself and get really sick from drinking too much water. This is a big thing that I see with a lot of my clients where I'm like, yo, we have to like your, your heart, your blood pressure, everything's getting so messed up because you were forcing water on you. Um, I'm now at that place in my life where water is, um, something that I do intuitively, just like I pee intuitively and I eat intuitively. Why not drink intuitively? So I drink when I'm thirsty. I drink when it feels right. And I don't drink just because someone told me I need to drink a gallon of water a day and I'm going to drink it. Um, that is very, very, very dangerous. And I highly recommend not doing that. If you are someone though, who's going to continue this behavior because I know I can say, hey, this is unhealthy and you shouldn't do this. Um, but sometimes we just have to learn by our own experience of ending up in the hospital with like heart palpitations and realizing that it's because we've been drinking too much water. Sometimes we just need our own experience with things to realize that, oh, okay, I. I shouldn't be doing this and this is not healthy. But if you are someone who's going to be doing this, if you're going to continue to do this, just drink a ton, a ton, a ton of water all day to starve off your hunger. Um, can you just like, can you just put in some electrolytes in there? Like, please, those little electrolyte packets, they're everywhere, right? The LMNT or you have the, oh, I always forget what the other one's called. Um, a couple other brands here. Can you just please put a packet of that in there? Cause at least you're getting some electrolytes or can you drink coconut water? Like, can we mix this up a little bit? Because just drinking the water is going to be quite dangerous. Um, I do want to just like note here how unhealthy I looked. You can just tell I was really underweight. Um, sometimes you can't really tell until you see the before and after. Um, I think now when I look at myself, I think like, wow, I'm really healthy. I'm really like vivacious. I have like beautiful round cheeks 
cheeks and I have like elasticity to my skin. I have color in my skin and um, I have like muscle tone and things like that. And that just feels really healthy to me. And I look back at that time in my life and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was just so depleted and you can really tell it wasn't just the fact that I was super underweight I was also just depleted um yeah and you can even hear it in my voice like my voice was way different back then which is a weird kind of thing that changed uh, through my recovery my bed last night I ended up drinking a lot I get really thirsty at night I don't know if I just did not I think it's because I'm not drinking enough during the day so then at night I finally so actually if you deal with this can you please put in the comment sections or hit the like button just to let me know like you deal with this um but drinking or sorry getting really thirsty at night is actually just that sign of dehydration and i was drinking so much water right like i'm drinking all this water and i'm like i'm getting really thirsty at night and that's actually because like i'm just not eating enough and we really need to hydrate via our food and not just water um so girls with you know an ed will be heavily restricting and they will be downing water and yet they will be severely dehydrated um and again the reason is because they're not eating enough food and a lot of that hydration needs to come from food so that was one of the reasons probably why I was super thirsty at night. Also, I was probably super thirsty at night because my like blood sugar was all off because I think at this point I was, I must have been, yeah, that was, mm -hmm. that was definitely, um, that was June 5th. So I was raw vegan at that time. So I was like really, 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 um, really restricting here. Uh, my blood sugar must have been so off from all the mono mealing on fruit and everything that that's going to create a lot of insulin issues and that's going to make me really thirsty. So I'm going to try and stay hydrated throughout my morning and throughout my afternoon um, with my literal, literally like boss of water. So remember to drink your water today, guys. It is super, super important. All right, so learn from me, guys. Don't be over drinking. Just simply drink when you're thirsty. Um, drink when it's hot outside and you know you need to keep yourself hydrated, but don't be pounding gallons of water. It's not healthy, it's not supportive. Let's move on to the next thing that I was talking about in this video. So a lot of people have a big fear of being extremely hungry on a plant-based diet that consists mainly of fruits and vegetables. It's like the number one fear that I hear from people is, oh, I couldn't do that. I would be so... <laughs> okay, so this is me talking to my camera being like, so many people are saying I could never be plant-based because I could never get full on a bunch of fruit and veggies. And I'm like, what are you crazy? Fruit and vegetables are the thing that makes you feel full. And I'm just like cracking up at it now. I'm like, I get what people meant. Like when healthy people would come to me and be like, I could never do that because I won't feel nourished. I won't feel satiated. I won't feel full on a plant-based diet. Like I get that because it's like, yeah, I don't. If I have a veggie day, it really is rare because my diet really surrounds itself around like animal protein. I have like two to four eggs every single day every single dinner like i'm having some form of steak or chicken or lamb chops or salmon or something like that lunch most of the time is going to be some sort of animal product as well can of sardines um can of tuna or you know smoked salmon something like that like there's so many animal products in my life but every once in a while right there will be a veg heavy day and oh my gosh, I will feel it. First off, my digestion, I will feel it. And also I will just feel super, super snacky. Not that being snacky is a bad thing, but when you're not feeling satiated and so you keep on reaching towards food, that's when we've got to look at our meals and go, hey, am I just actually giving my body what it needs? I think those days where I just like randomly have like veggie days, um, it really throws me off because I never feel that feeling of like, I'm satiated, I'm grounded and I'm nourished. Um, I can feel full at times, um, but I don't ever feel satiated. It's the thing, it is fruits and vegetables that make you full, that fill you up. So. For example, last night I came home and I was hungry and I had some bread. Literally six pieces later and I'm still eating the bread. And not because I was emotionally eating, I wasn't emotionally eating at all. I literally was just still hungry. The bread did not fill me up at all. And so I had to keep on eating and eating and eating. Now, 
I just had lunch and I literally just had this whole thing of watermelon and I am stuffed. Like absolutely just like so, so full. I can even imagine eating anymore. Like I am struggling to like finish off the last little like bit here. Mm-hmm. Fruits and vegetables have fiber. They have water in them. It fills you up. It is the animal products and the oils and the um, the grains and things like that. Those are the things that don't fill you up. They take up like, you know this much space or little space in your stomach, and it's like vegetables take up like this much space, and you get fuller way quicker when you start eating plant based. So please give it a try. Yeah. Okay, so I let myself ramble there because I wanted you to get the full effect. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that beautiful? Um, okay, so I was saying like fruits and vegetables are the things that fill you up. And that was 1000% my mentality back then. Like I really was fearful of, you know, eating more um, as far as like calorie wise. And so I would volume eat, I would fill my plates up with, you know, fruits and veg and more fruits and more veg. And I would feel like I could just eat and eat and eat and eat. And then like, I would eventually eat so much. There'd be so much fiber and so much water and everything that I'd feel so full. And so then I'm like telling you like, Hey, after I ate this thing of watermelon, like I feel extraordinarily full. Um, which I'm like, yeah, you're full, but you're not like satiated. So the interesting thing here is I was like, last night I ate a bunch of bread. I ate six slices of bread last night. So come to think of it, these videos must have been right before I went raw. Um, I was thinking June, I went, uh, raw, but it must've been like middle of June. Cause this is June 5th. So I was eating just like a vegan diet at that time. And here I was saying I ate six slices of bread and I wasn't emotionally eating. I just was hungry, but this like food wasn't filling me up. And I look at that and I'm go, no, you ate six slices of bread because yes, your body was hungry and you're not eating any food. You're just like filling your stomach up with fruits and vegetables so that by the end of the day, when you finally do eat a piece of bread, you're going to eat six slices. <laughs> like, I couldn't see that. Like I couldn't see why I was having these, what felt like me at that time, binging episodes of like, I ate six slices of bread or I ate the whole jar of nut butter. Or like I would have these nights constantly. Um, and I thought, you know, oh, this food is bad. See, this food is bad. You overeat this food. I'm like, no, the only reason why I was ever overeating that food was because I was chronically malnourished and my body needed to get that food in. Um, and so, yes, I'm glad my body was smart and was like, let's eat six slices of bread here. Um, but I was wrong in thinking that my body was wrong for doing so. And that, um, it meant that bread and pasta and all those things were bad because look, I uncontrollably eat them. It's like, no, you have so much rigid control in your life. The second you bring anything else into your diet, like pasta or bread, you're going to go crazy with it. But someone who is well nourished, who's eating enough protein, fats and carbs, and just a well-balanced kind of diet. And you're eating consistently and you're eating enough calories. You're not going to randomly feel like eating six slices of bread. I don't ever feel that way anymore because I'm not malnourished. I can have my two slices of bread and I can move on, right? And my body isn't getting this feeling of like, I'm ravenous and I need to just keep on eating. Like it doesn't get that because I'm not in that state. So that's what I want you guys to see here is like the reason why I was eating the six slices because I was malnourished. I know I've repeated that like a million times, but I think sometimes we really just like need to hear it. Um, and we need to stop demonizing these foods. Instead, we need to understand that we can't just survive off of fruits and vegetables. And we do need, um, we do need other foods in there. And, you know, I'm looking at this and I go, yeah, it makes sense why I'm hoarding food. It makes sense why I am doing all of these things because I'm over drinking water and I'm like only eating really low calorie, like fruits and veg and like, you know, and I'm plant-based. I've taken out all animal products. I'm, you know, I'm sure at that time was still exercising and all of that. And so 
yeah, it's like, no duh, no duh, I'm going through all of this. So that's all I had for this video today. If you resonate with any part of this video, please drop down into the comment section below, like kind of your story and what you've been through. I'd be really curious to hear if other people go through hoarding, um, or if you have been someone who drank a bunch of water, or if you're someone who just tried to volume eat all the time, let me know down below. Make sure you like this video. I got this other great video right here that you're probably going to want to go and check out. You're going to find that one interesting. I appreciate you for being here and I will see you in my next one.